Hey everybody, David Fine here from Keys Moths. And today we're going to talk about a South Florida butterfly that established for a little while. It's from the Caribbean, but it disappeared again. It's the Knicker Bean Blue, Cyclargus Ammon, a really tiny blue that established for several years down on Big Pine Key. And we're gonna talk about this incredible, beautiful butterfly, some of its close relatives and its host plant relationships and a lot, lot more, so stay tuned. I think it was 1999, the first time I heard about the Knicker Bean Blue. And it was a, you know, all the way down on Big Pine Key, which is like a four hour drive south for me. And it was behind a Win Dixie for when I heard. So a uh, couple friends of, uh, of mine and I went down, we found them. They were all over the place. More in the winter and early spring months, they tend to, kind of like be less common in the fall, I'm sorry, in the summer. And then they would actually disappear during the summer and then reappear in the fall and become more and more common throughout the winter and then into the spring months. And so uh, they're called the knicker bean blue because in the Caribbean they feed on uh, Castellapinia bonduc, a gray knicker bean, and, which is a plant that's common in the coastal dunes of South Florida and is the host plant for the Miami blue Cyclargus Thomasi, which is a real close relative of this butterfly. I'm going to show you the difference here in a minute between the knicker bean blue that doesn't feed on knicker bean and the Miami blue, which does feed on knicker bean. Anyway, uh, so they're feeding on Pineland acacia. And so I'm going to give you a little excerpt of Pineland acacia and check this out. We found some really nice established plants in Everglades National Park. Check out the host plant for the knicker bean blue in South Florida. Vanessia pinatorium pineland acacia is a plant that is down here in South Florida. Look at the thorns on this thing. What a thorny plant. Guys, this is a plant that you do not want to run into without some thick clothes on because it's got wicked, wicked thorns. Um, and the, uh, there's actually quite a few different butterflies that use this acacia as larval host plants. And one of them was used to be found in Big Pine Key. It was the knicker bean blue, um, Cyclargus ammon. What, it was the only, only place you could find it was on Big Pine Key and it used this as its larval host plant. Caterpillars would eat the blooms and flowers of this plant, but they would also be competing with caterpillars for the Serranus blue as well as the gray hair streak and I stop uh, Strymon, I stop of the mallow scrub hair streak. Uh, it's a great plant. It grows probably I've seen them about five or six feet tall. Uh, it's a nectar source, as you can see. There's a some kind of a bee, which I don't recognize, zipping around there looking for nectar. It's a sweet, sweet smelling flower. It's a great flower to have in your garden, as long as you don't mind getting raked by wicked, wicked spines. Huh? You hear that? There's a woodpecker? Yeah. I saw a woodpecker fly up in one of these trees. Oh, it's right there. You see him? Yeah, second tree. Oh, yeah. Let's see if we can get... I thought I heard some. There is a woodpecker up there. Oh, I see him. I can't, t I can't make out the species. Oh, there he goes. But, Pineland Acacia, uh, great plant. Um, it's a great... Great plant for South Florida butterflies and moths. And uh, I, I would imagine it would be a great plant for night flying pyralids and little noctuids and geometrids and stuff like that for nectar. So um, it the knicker bean blue, I think the last time it was seen was around 2004, 2005, somewhere around there. They, they disappeared. I, I don't know why. Uh, they were very, very common in the Pinelands of Big Pine Key. Uh, anywhere that Pineland Acacia was, they you'd see them just floating around in the in the grass, and they'd land there, and you could see them. Uh, <laughs> they, they are extremely close if, in resemblance to the Miami Blue, and so there's really only a very short little differences between the two. And I'm going to show you a box of blues that I have in my collection that were almost all of which were collected 20 years ago or more. Um, and so I'm going to show you the difference between the 
uh, Nicker Bean Blue and the Miami Blue. Check this out. All right, we actually have six species of blues in South Florida. And what I wanted to do is show you the six species real quick. Uh, this one is the... This one is the Western Pygmy Blue, Perfidium exilis. They have a little bit of blue dusting on the inner forewing, on the, on the dorsal side. Ventral side's got a little bit more white frosting than its counterpart, the Eastern Pygmy Blue, which is this guy. Eastern Pygmy Blues have almost no blue on top. Actually, I don't think they have any blue on top. They're all brown. Uh, I don't have any underside mounted specimens there but they don't have nearly as much white frosting coloration as the uh, western pygmy blue but western pygmy blue lives they, they actually found a couple colonies in the fort myers area next species is the serranus blue uh, and this is a very widespread and common butterfly and it lives throughout the state throughout the southern united states um we have the cassius blue which is they're all the same size. Now the two that are in confusion are, this is the Miami blue right here. This is Cyclargus thomasi. Most of these specimens are from the Caribbean and some were taken in the 70s, were given to me by some friends that had collected in the 70s. <clears throat> and here is our knicker bean blue. So this is a series of knicker bean blues, Cyclargus ammon, and they are beautiful, guys. And, okay, the main difference between the Knicker Bean Blue and the Miami Blue, Knicker Bean Blue's got these three black dots on the hind wing right here. I'm going to try and crop in for you real quick. Three black dots right there. Miami Blue, four black dots. Four black dots, okay? So you can see the Miami Blue specimens have have four black dots circled and the knicker bean blue and the knicker bean blue only has three black dots that are circled and so that's the main difference but other than that they're actually very very similar uh similar species guys are very difficult to tell apart they're pretty close aren't they guys the miami blue has and i'm not going to get into the miami blue right now because we're going to make some other videos just on that butterfly um, they were living on Bahia Honda Key, very, very um, thriving at the same time that the Knickerbeam Blue was living in Big Pine Key, just a few miles to the south, uh, feeding on different host plants. But uh, I actually did a, rear, a breeding project with the Knickerbeam Blue. I actually bred it on Knickerbeam, not Acacia, and I found out that the uh, adults of the Blue came out a lot larger when I bred them on knicker bean than when I bred them on the acacia blooms and seeds. And so that's telling, you know, because in nature down there in Big Pine Key, they were considerably smaller. They were less than an inch wingspan. The Miami blue was a lot larger. That would have been an easy way to tell them apart in the field. Uh, but when you put the knicker bean blue on knicker bean, for whatever reason, the caterpillar, when it eats the knicker bean leaves as a larva, the adult comes out a lot larger and more robust, more healthy looking. So that could have been a reason why they disappeared. We don't know for sure. That's just a hunch of mine. Uh, but, and I also understand that some folks found Knicker Bean Blues in and amongst the Miami Blues at the time before the Miami Blues, you know, said so long to uh, Bahia Honda Key. But, um, guys, the, it's a cool bug. We, we miss it. I wish we could see it again, but uh, it was a introduced stray from the Caribbean. Uh, lives on several, various Caribbean islands, the Bahamas and Lesser Antilles and so on. Uh, but guys, hope you like the video. This is a cool short video about these cool little butterflies that live here in South Florida or they establish temporarily come in and out and that kind of thing. It's very mysterious on why this thing showed up. How did it get here? No idea. Why is it eating acacia, not knicker bean? I don't know. And then why did it leave? Who knows? Uh, maybe comment down below if you have any idea why the knicker bean blue may not have made it. I have no idea. Uh, it's interesting though, like right around the same time, the Florida leaf wing and the Bartram's hair streak also disappeared from Big Pine Key. So maybe there's a correlation why all those butterflies disappeared around the same time. Um, 
kind of sad. I miss them. So, uh, guys, give me a thumbs up if you liked the video. Don't forget to subscribe. Uh, hope to see the knicker bean blue again in South Florida. Maybe. We'll see. Uh, guys, take care. Let's get out there and enjoy South Florida. Hope you learned something. Bye now.